Talk to me about the knife that the, the night that changed your life. Wow, man, amazing. Um, once again, I was that go-to guy. And even when there was neighborhood beef, it could just be about a guy stepped on somebody's shoe. And if I was close to these people, they normally called me or came and got me, and I would always intervene and squash the beef. If it was a petty beef, we'd laugh after it was over and it'd be done. If it was something involving money or drugs, we was able to settle it most of the time and, and, and go on. Uh, but this particular time, a relative of mine had got jumped on by some guys in the neighborhood. I still don't know what it was about to this day, but I tried to intervene as the go-to guy once again. And once I intervened into this big argument, um, before you knew it, man, the guys was going after my uncle. Um, give, give me one second, because I want to walk through this slow, if you don't mind. Is it a regular night for you? Set the scene for the audience. Okay. I want to, to show just how quickly, if you are not thinking, if you do not take five seconds out of your life That's to right. pause and don't react, how right. everything in your life can change. So yes. Yes. What kind of night was it? Was it a cold night? Was it a hot night? Were man, June 11th, June 11th, 1996, man. It was, the summer was just coming into play here in Milwaukee, man. It was warming up, nice day. I called a friend of mine, man, and I said, hey, man, let's just get together. Let's hang out, man. I got some people over here. They want to hang out. So we had went to the store. I did. I grabbed some stuff. And my little cousin, she had stayed with us. My granddad had brought her in and her little brother. So with them staying there as well, I come in. I said, Trina, I'm going to give you $20. Iron my pants for me. I'm getting ready to go out tonight. So you know how we do. I put the 20 in her hand. She started ironing my clothes. I ran me some bath water. Next thing you know, my uncle hit that door. Boom. Blood in his mouth. Like, hey, man, they just got me. They just jumped me. So I'm like, oh, man, here we go again. So, you know, like I said, this is this is average activity in the hood, right? You know, cats get jumped. You go out there and squash the beef real quick. So I'm like, hey, go finish all my clothes. I'm going to go squash this beef, and I'll be back in a minute. So I run out. We leave out the house. And I remember this just like it was yesterday. My grandmother came to the door and said, where y'all going? I said, oh, Mom, I'll be right back. I got this. The same phrase that I had told my grandmother ever since I left school. Oh, mom, I got this. So I told her, mom, chill, I got this. So we walked, got around the corner. So I began to ask questions. What's going on? It was about 15, 20 guys out there and me and my uncle. So I started to ask questions. I was going, so I was getting it de-escalated. It didn't have any teeth anymore. It was, it was dead. I was like, okay, everything's fine. And so you went out up. there, I'm, and I'm sorry to jump in here. You went out there, not with the mindset of we gonna get them, you went no. out there, look, no. I'm about to go out for the night. Right. This is yeah. about to take my shower. <laughs> I, I no just de-escalate this? Right. So I get there, some guys is kind of hostile, like, oh man, you went and got added. So I'm like, no nah, man, it ain't that type of party. Let's just, you know, squash this beef, man, what it was about. Did my uncle take some money? Did my uncle touch some drugs? Did my uncle do anything? And they was like, no, he just talking, talking bad, talking tough, talking crazy. So I was like, oh, man, listen, man. Don't even, even my uncle got a little heated. And I told him, chill out. Chill out. It's good. We good. Um, but as I am, because people that go for some beef, they come around the corner shooting. Mm -hmm. They ain't doing no talking. They see 15, 20 guys out there, man. They coming around that corner. Pop, 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 pop. So I, I, I didn't pull out an arm. I didn't do anything. I was just talking. But three other guys showed up after the fact that we were squashing this beef. The beef was being squashed. But the three guys that showed up later, I don't know if they had any interest on squashing the beef. I don't know if they just assumed because they seen my uncle now with somebody else that it was on and popping or whatnot. But when they turned that corner, they turned that corner with, you know, with the mindset or the, the, the from what I perceive where I was standing, the demeanor that, uh-oh, 
it's going to go down out here tonight. So wow. at that point, so at that point, you know, my antennas went up, my ears went up, um, the hair grew on my arms, and everything in my mind was telling me it's on out here, man. Ain't no turning back. So how does it go from these three guys coming around the corner to you pulling out this gun and doing what you did? And 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 that's the and that's the that's the um that's really the 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 gauntlet of this whole situation is that when the three guys turned the corner, you could see the fire in the eyes of the individuals approaching, but none ever approached me. One got up on my uncle, maybe nose to nose. And back in those days, the Carl Canais, the cross colors, all the, 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 the clothes wasn't slim back then. Mm -hmm. They were big baggy clothes. So the guy that got up on my uncle nose to nose and they were fussing back and forth, I seen him reach for his pants. When I went to court, they said he was pulling up his pants. But in my mind, what I seen was a guy reaching. So I pushed my uncle out the way and I, I shot twice, pow, pow. At that moment, it's like the world stood still. I shot twice and everything got quiet, everything got still, and then everybody started running. Guys started running out of the yard. The guy that was up on, on my uncle started running in the opposite direction. The guys that were with him started running in the opposite direction. And my adrenaline was pumping. The people was coming out of the yards. And I was shooting at them, trying to keep them back from attacking us. That was, This was my whole mentality. Hey, it's life or death out here now. These guys going to come at us. So I was just in that type of mindset. And I didn't come down until after everybody had ran away. OK, let's stay here for a second. Number one, is this the first time you ever had to bust your gun? That's the first time that I ever had to bust my gun, yes. You go out there, you're going out there with the, with the mindset of, I'm going to de-escalate this situation, but you still had your pistol on you. So I'm assuming yes. that this is just part of your attire. Wherever you went at this point in your life, you know, this, this was my uniform. I'm, I'm dressing like, up, but I got my thing with me. Is that correct? Like, put, like putting on a belt. When I put my belt on, I grabbed that too and stick it in my pocket. It's just how I was. What was you carrying? Uh, at that time, I was carrying a 25. I was carrying a small 25. Like when I went out to clubs, I would carry a small 25 just to, you know, like I said, I'm not starting nothing, but I at least want to be able to protect myself. And, Understood. you know, when it was, when you felt like it was some drama, drama going on, you tried to always have something, something a little bigger than that. But a 25 caliber gun is what I carry when I was just hanging out, having a good time. Got you. Walk me through this moment. You shoot two times. Mm -hmm. World is standing still. Do you know that the person you were shooting at, do you know he's hit? You said he ran away. Do you see him drop? And ultimately, do you know he expires? He passed away. You just killed yes. the man. Yeah. Um, when I shot, I didn't even think he was hit. Everybody just stopped in their tracks. And somebody, I think somebody even screamed out, man, run. And I think everybody started running. And I never knew he was hit. Didn't see any blood. Didn't see any bullet holes, anything like that. He just started running. And everybody else started running out the yard. So it was just a total panic. It seems like looking back. It was a total panic, and he ran to the next block. And on the next block is where he laid on the ground, and he collapsed, and he passed away. And that's one thing that I didn't even know once I got arrested later on that night. Um, everybody was telling me that it was police everywhere and all of that, and I started to get really worried, like, man, did I hit him? Did I hit him? You know, and I'm just asking myself this question. So when the police finally came and we started talking, it was me not even knowing that the man was hit yet, that he had died, anything like that. I'm totally in the dark. So I'm just like, hey man, I was defending my uncle. You know, the thing got out of hand. You know, I thought I had it under control. 
but it got away from me. You know, and I'm sorry. I still don't know he he, he passed away yet till they got me downtown, put me in a holding cell, and I was sitting in there just wondering like what's going on with my life. And they slid a paper under that door, man, and it said first degree intentional homicide, mandatory life sentence. Stop there. <laughs> So when you're talking to the cops, are you at home at this point? When you first start talking to the cops, they come, do they talk to you in the crib or do they say, look, we want you to come downtown with us? Uh, no, a friend of mine lived up the street and I was at their house and we were talking about the incident. Like, man, they ran up on, you know, um, and this, that, and the other. So we talking about it back and forth, like what's going on? And he like, oh man, you know, the hood mentality is, man, there's gonna be a war out here, man. These guys coming back. You know, they coming back. So I'm like, oh man, it's gonna, it's gonna be a war out here. So next you know, the police knocked at the door. At your friend's at crib. Police. At my friend's crib, yes. The police knocked at the door and I come down and then that's when we start talking. Okay, at that point, they know you did it. I'm assuming yes. if they knock at your friend's door, word yeah, don't they looking for me. They know who did what. It ain't like it is today where a bunch of people got cell phone video and all of that yeah. stuff. How they know yeah. it was you that quick? Um, everybody that was out there, you know, pretty much told them it was me, and I had did it, and all of that. It wasn't no like people have on, in the movies, like, oh, the hood. You know, we can't tell you what happened. We can't tell you who did it. We can't. We can't snitch and all that type of talk. Um, that was just a. That was just a, a fantasy. That wasn't real. That, 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 everybody, like I said, it was 15, 20 people in that yard. And all of them told them that it was Ed. It wasn't, it wasn't no gangster stuff. It was, oh, Ed did that. And Ed be at this house, Ed be at this house. So every house that they told them that I be at, they pretty much showed up there looking for Ed. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.